Alex, what we got going on? Well, the music guys over here have taken over the lyrics, which is good because that's not me. I'm guessing we have artful people here doing the coloring. We have a nurse doing the gingerbread house, which is fantastic news. And then John is uh, doing the snowflakes. So yeah. That's what are What, what are got. you doing? I'm observing right now, and then I'm gonna dive in. At first. What What do you What's your comments on what you've seen so far? Well, I've seen some pretty effective usage of the letter W. Very shrewd. So, I mean, they know they know what they're doing. I've been impressed. It's very creative. Uh, I've seen some groups incorporate a dollar sign. Not sure where they're going with that, but you know, um, but. But it does help to uh, to really bring all the creativity to bear here. It's been good. <laughs> the craftsmanship, maybe you can tell, carefully woven, durable. I mean, look at that. See, it even it even falls as it falls. It's like a real snowflake. No, no, no. Before I came to Countryside as the youth pastor, Dale became a youth leader. And so Dale's been youth leader for the past 18 years. And so I've been the youth pastor for about 17 years. And uh, Dale has been an incredible blessing. Um, at the end of just about every epistle, Paul has a, a list of people that he wants to greet or he wants to thank or he wants to talk about in ministry. And uh, Dale is a faithful man that's been entrusted with much the lives of many, many youth for a number of years. And he's just been faithful, um, loving on them, caring for them, ministering to them, challenging them, praying for them, counseling them, taking them through partners. And uh, Dale is one of those uh, rare jewels of uh, Christian ministry and fellowship. Uh, he's fun, uh, he works hard, um, it's not easy. To, uh, to keep up with all the youth schedule and stuff. And he, he's done it with, uh, you know, just a, a joy and with a delight. Um, really peaceable man who's uh, firm yet uh, gracious at the same time. And so we just, we love Dale. Thank you for all your ministry and for everything that you've done. Um, we can still edit this if he changes his mind in the last week, right? We can cut this. Yeah, okay. We should do that. So there's still time. But, uh, you know, Dale and I would pray, um, I would pray for Dale and, and ask him every year, you know, what he'd like to do. And uh, we hate to see him go, but we're ecstatic for him and we know we'll still see him around in ministry and 
just uh, love you, man. Thanks for all you've done. The Lord has chosen to bless me um, in so many different ways. And, and one of those ways was through a man named Dale. I've had the honor of serving with Dale for over 10 years. Uh, we've served together in many different uh, ministries. We've served together in, in youth group. We've served together on the AV teams. Um, and it's been a, it's been a true blessing. Um, you know, Dale is someone that we all love and that we've all learned from. Uh, you know, one of the things is Dale has also worn so many different hats when it comes to ministry. I mean, you got youth leader, you, you have soundboard tech, you, you even have axe throwing assistant and even canoe race partner. Uh, and Dale has served in those roles faithfully in every uh, facet of the ministry that he served in. You know, in youth group, we talk a lot about modeling Christ uh, according to the scriptures. Um, in our recent studies, both in 1 Corinthians and in Philippians, uh, we have seen how we are commanded to model Christ and to behave as Scripture calls us to. We are told to imitate and follow Paul's example. Um, 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, be imitators of me just as I am of Christ. And also we have Philippians 3.17, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. Observe those, imitate those who follow Christ. As Christians, we are known by the fruits that we display. The fruit of the Spirit identifies a person that has 100% given their life over to Christ Jesus. I have seen directly seen that in Dale's life with the many years that I've served alongside him I've seen he has a heart for the ministry. He has a heart for the youth. He gives all in every ministry that he is part of. Ministering alongside Dale uh, in youth has had a tremendous impact in my life, um, especially that I watched him model the fruits of the Spirit, particularly gentleness. You know, in Proverbs 15, we read about a, a gentle word turns away wrath, and a harsh word stirs up anger. How many times have we seen that modeled in Dale Frank? We've seen how he acts and everything. Dale has a gentle spirit about him. How many times has, has the youth, you, benefited from having the wisdom of Dale on display and given to you with gentle words? I, I can tell you in my own life, in my life particularly, there are many examples that I can go back and call upon and see Dale modeling the fruit of the spirit of gentleness in his life for my benefit. I have personally been observing and desiring to imitate Dale Frank from the very first day that I met the man in youth. Dale, you're gonna be missed by cross culture. Roots, is getting a tremendous blessing and a faithful servant. We love you, man.
the majority of my friends have been saved through the Inks group. And that's just, it's just amazing that all of their, our leaders are just here to pour into us, just to help us, correct us if we're struggling with something or just to provide ways to just make us stronger. I'm really thankful for my leaders. They've been awesome. They're such incredible mentors in my life that I can look to and grow from. And they're always there for me when I need them the most. When I joined the middle school, um, I remember mom got a call from Justin just asking about, you know, uh, who is this Ezra guy? Uh, tell me a bit about him. Where did y'all go to church before that? And um, that just really shocked me to see how invested he was in our lives. To have that system of support and to know that whatever I'm going through in life, if I need to talk to somebody, if I need advice about something, I can go to my leaders, I can even go to Justin, and they're always there regardless of what they have going in their life. There's been days where I come and I'm not feeling it. I'm going go through the trenches and my leader can see that and then like I'll get a text from her and she'll be like, hey, are you okay? And I'm like, mm, I'm not okay. And it's just such a comforting thing to know that somebody is there looking out for me personally. I'm really thankful for the interns. I think they do a fantastic job of learning from Justin and uh, I love having them in the youth group and learning from them as well. It's just really a blessing that they spend the time that they come after long days of work to on Wednesday night and they wake up early on Sunday morning to come help us and encourage us and lead us towards Christ. And that's a great example of that one for I was saved in the high school and so really my whole spiritual journey up to this point has been entirely in the youth group. I don't think I was a Christian when I first came to youth group. Since I became a Christian, the youth group was really encouraged me. I remember becoming a Christian, it was towards the end of my sophomore year of high school. Just looking back from that time till now, it's just amazing to see how much God has worked in my life. Middle school. Before I was a Christian, mostly just thought myself thought about what I had to do, things like this. I became a believer like towards the end of eighth grade during like COVID year. It's like an indescribable feeling to be able to look back at my four years and just like be able to see that growth in Christ. I feel like I've grown a lot as a Christian while I was in the youth group, um, especially just in how to care for my friends and be around godly believers and how to pour into them and to invest in others is something that I feel like I've learned a lot about. All the people that are teaching on Sundays and Wednesdays faithfully, all the leaders that are helping us during small groups and just talking to us. Grown, especially in the last couple of years, not really trying to focus on myself, what I want in life, but think about others, what I can do for them, what they need. I would say my desires have really changed. Like when I first came to YouTube, I wasn't really trying to be here to actually grow. YouTube really encouraged me to, to want to, you know, to worship, to sing, to have that Bible study, have that fellowship with other believers. I've become more aware of other people that it's not me who does things. If I do things through strength or um, if I'm patient or I don't you know, lash out in anger in a response, it's not me, it's God. I think there's several areas that I've really seen growth. My trust in God through different circumstances in high school and different trials I've gone through. God has just proved himself faithful time and time again. I've also seen a growing love for his word as I've gone through these different challenges. I've found comfort in his word and it's really helped me stay grounded in my faith. It's imperative to be able to defend our faith and I really appreciate Bible quizzing and just the challenges that we're given in our small groups. One thing that I've really learned to understand is like contentment and knowing that God placed me where I am for a reason. And he will bring me through every single season of my life, just like he did the last. And to know that my situation that I'm in, the Lord put me there, the Lord wants me there. And just to be grateful and content with where I am and not just keep searching for what's next or what I don't have, or I wanna be with those people. I wanna, you know, experience this. I wish I went to that school, but just know that God has me where I am for a reason. And he has such a wonderful purpose. Some of my favorite memories have been outpost for it's fantastic. I love waking up the next day and being ridiculously sore. I also love just growing with friends uh, during the times before and after youth. Uh, it's really fantastic to be able to pour into each other and to grow from each other. Two summers ago on the Missouri camp, the first one that we went to, uh, we were all in that cabin. Cody was our leader and it was like me, John, Connor, a bunch of other guys, Adam. But one night there was a spider and it was a big spider and it was running around and I actually stepped on it and killed it and a bunch of like the, the babies that was on its back just like spilled and went everywhere. The next couple nights were traumatizing. Oh my goodness, there's so many things. Small group theme night, always wonderful and fun. Though there's so many stories from camp, people smuggling turtles, 
random fake trade calls happening. So many things that happened on camps. I think I remember especially the two hour detour to a Christmas town where they had like Christmas decorations in June. And we took two hours in the bus trip. We got lost, went through this town that I don't think a bus ever went through. I remember a couple years ago, we went to Six Flags on camp and it was just pouring down rain all day. It would go on and off and on and off. One part I specifically remember, it was me and Audrey and Lily, and we were in line and we were waiting for the Screamin' Eagle, which has like a little canopy over the waiting line. While we were like under there, it just started absolutely torrential downpouring. And there was just this huge group of kids, all, we all had matching t-shirts on, and they all were just like running to get out of the rain. At Camp Copus, it's me, Gresham, Sean. It's our hotel room and you know, we're, um, we're getting settled down and it comes down to the sleeping arrangement. Well, everyone's fighting over, you know, I don't want to share a bed with this guy. So we have two beds, right? And then we have the foldable couch. You know, I go, okay, cool. I'll, I'll sleep with Sean on the couch. Well, Grusham, he's like, all right, uh, I don't want to sleep with anyone. So I'll take my stuff to the bathtub and I'll, I'll sleep there. This is like right after we took our shower. So I'm like, okay, you know, good night. I turn over and Sean, like, He's there dancing and like shaking the mattress and I probably went to bed at like one. And the next day he was like, how'd you sleep? And I was like, what do you think? How do you think I slept? Waiting in line for a tower pair. We had been there for three hours. And then right before we got on the ride, it broke down and we just sat on the floor and all were able to fellowship and talk and make friends. And then we had to get on the ride after that, being the first ones after it broke down, which was fun and scary. One of my favorite memories from youth is an event that we all call Alex's Mortuary. We were in a hotel room with Josiah as our small group leader. We were all getting going through the showers, getting ready for bed. And keep in mind, this room was, there's probably six or eight of us. We had a guy on the couch bed, under the couch bed, at their feet, at their feet, at their feet, and Josiah on the bed. Like, it was tidy. I had the phone start ringing, so Josiah answers it really fast, and he just goes, thank you for calling Alex's Mortuary. You stab him, we slab him, how many serve you? and we're all cracking up laughing. Apparently youth rooms have been calling other youth rooms and prank calling. Well, it was the front desk. And so she goes, hi, this is Tina from the front desk. And he apologizes and she hangs up. Nothing happened, so he gets in the shower and the phone starts ringing again. We're like, Josiah, should we answer the phone? He's like, yes, but not like we did. So we take the phone, we answer it, and it's the front desk again. She's asking if there's an adult in the room. We're like, Josiah, you gotta go to the front desk and talk to her. Well, apparently we weren't even supposed to be in that hotel room. They gave us the keys to the wrong room and so they thought somebody was in the hotel room prank calling and it just somehow snuck in. So we had to switch rooms in the middle of the night. And that's why the room was so small, was because we weren't supposed to be in there. My final challenge to the youth group would be find good biblical friendships that are just going to last. Go out of your way to really dig into your relationships. Be devoted to help them grow. And if you're helping other people grow, then it'll help you grow as well. Psalm 56, three, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. I put my trust in you. Confidence in the Lord is a purposeful decision, replacing an emotional reaction to one's circumstances. It's extremely easy to get carried away with, you know, I wanna, I wanna be with these people. I wanna dress this way. I'm gonna go do this. Exercise that idea of purposely following the Lord's plan. First of all, if you are listening and you are not a Christian, they not accepted Christ, you need to do that because the rest of what I'm about to say won't apply to you at all. With that being said, I would say that if you are a Christian, you are seeking to grow, that you need to get your life right now, start making habits and patterns in your life that will carry you through, you know, your college years, your career, your marriage, your whatever, whatever Lord hasn't planned for you. You need to get your life right and make patterns and habits that you can fall back on and you know what to do. So when something big happens or some big temptation or trial comes, you already have that pattern that you can fall back on that, oh, I've been here before. Keep your eyes set on Christ because high school throws a lot of different new experiences at you and a lot of challenges and in all the crazy, it can be easy to lose sight of your faith and lose sight of Christ our rock. Isaiah 26, three through four, you keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. My final challenge comes in two parts. First is to the freshmen, where I would tell them to learn and grow from the seniors who you see as godly and Christ-like, and you can grow to be like them. You're around them a lot and interacting with them a little bit more than you are with the leaders a lot of times. And so I was able to learn a lot from the seniors when I was a freshman. 
And then the second part of that is for the, for the upcoming seniors is that you can help partner with the, with the freshmen and interact with them and help them grow. First and foremost, to find your identity and your purpose and your worth and your contentment in Christ and Christ alone. Because one thing that I've learned the hard way is that if you keep on searching for your identity and your worth and your joy in anything else besides Christ, it's gonna fail you. If you keep thinking, I'll be happy once I graduate, I'll be happy once summer comes around, I'll be happy if I have that friend, I'll be happy once this trial is over, you're never gonna find your satisfaction. You're constantly gonna be searching for something more and something better when the best thing is right in front of your face, which is Christ. Finding a Paul, a Barnabas, and a Timothy. A Paul, someone that you can look up to, someone that you can try to copy, because, you know, as Paul said, follow me, because he followed Jesus. Coming into the youth group, finding a senior, someone that's really, you know, working hard in Christ. And then if you also have to find a barn with someone that you're at the same level with, someone that you can help along the way, grow with them, grow with each other. Then finding a Timothy, if you're a senior looking down and finding that new freshman that's nervous or all like, oh my goodness, it's high school. To find them, help them grow, pour into them like other people poured into you. My final challenge to the youth group is to find joy in every situation. Um, to do this, you do have to be a child of God because if your joy is in anything else except for him, then it's gonna be taken away by different circumstances or something changing. But once you are adopted into his family, you can find joy in every situation, even the terrible days where you know, people are kind to you or just everything seems to be going on. There are still so many blessings that have been heaped upon you day after day after day. I just am really encouraged that I'm not alone in this journey, that he is with me and he's supporting me and he will provide everything that I need. One verse that's stood out to me for a couple years now is Psalm 94, 19. When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your consolations delight my soul. The world just tells us all the time. You hear it at school and just when you're around through the media, that these years are to be wasted. You know, do what you want with them. Uh, you, you can fix the consequences of it later and just kind of start over. You know, do what you want. But ultimately, these years are really formative and foundational for the rest of our lives. And the habits we develop now are the habits we're gonna have in the future. So if we focus on prioritize on godly things now, that's gonna have a huge impact for his kingdom later. So I think that my final challenge is to not listen to those lies. Each and every one of you could make an impact for the Lord and he will give you the ability to do so if you follow him. But we have to do that now. It's not something that we can wait to do.